Hey guys, and welcome back to Maury's Menu. So today we're gonna to be doing my first charcuterie board. I'm really excited for this. I've seen it obviously everywhere, especially in the past couple of months, and I wanted to try and make one myself. I kind of waited to do it because I find that Trader Joe's has really affordable cheeses, so I was waiting until I got to a Trader Joe's. So if you saw my last haul, you know that I had a bunch of stuff that I purchased from there for this charcuterie board. You can obviously get a lot of the stuff just at any grocery store. I just find that some of it's more expensive and Trader Joe's has a huge section and all just sorts of different stuff to try. Plus there's some cheeses there that I know I really like and that I wanted to include on this. So I just have an array of stuff here and so we're just gonna throw it together and I'll show you how I do it. Obviously there's lots of ways to do it but kinda looked up some things that must haves that you should include. So I'll go ahead and show you what I do and maybe you can try it for yourself. All right, so first things first, when you wanna make your board, you obviously have to have something to put it on and a base to have. So I'm going to use this little wooden cutting board. Um, I got this from Ikea for really cheap if you're looking for something similar to this. I'm just gonna use this one in particular. I have a cool one that has like Morgs menu in it that you guys have maybe have seen on some of my videos, but it's really heavy. It's a really heavy duty cutting board, which is awesome, but just for it to be able to like move this around and that kind of stuff, I wanted something a little bit lighter. Plus this one's I think a pretty good size. Um, it's pretty big. I have several different kinds of stuff, so I wanted to get something that was big enough so it can be spread out but still looks nice. You can obviously just put this on a plate, especially if you're just like making it for yourself, but you wanna get some sort of flat-ish surface or just a plate or something to put everything on. Next up, you're obviously going to need some cheeses because you can't have a charcuterie board without cheeses. So I have four different cheeses here. Now I think the recommendation is to try and combine cheeses with a bunch of different flavors, maybe some different textures. So you want like a harder cheese or a softer cheese, different things like that. So I got a couple different cheeses here that I'm gonna show you what I picked out. Again, pick out whatever you like. These are all from Trader Joe's. A couple of them I've had before and a couple of them I'll be trying for the first time. All right, so the first cheese I got is a brie. I think a brie is probably a staple that most charcuterie boards are going to have. Brie is so, so good. I really like this goat milk brie that I got from Trader Joe's, and it's nice because it comes in this kind of small packaging. Perfect size to just kind of take this out, slice it up, and put it on the board. For a kind of harder cheese, I got this Dutch Gouda cheese. I really like Gouda cheese and I figured it'd be a good contrast and this was really affordable. This whole big thing of kind of like a fancier cheese was only $2.64 so it's really nice. Trader Joe's is good too because they have a bunch of different like sizes like they're definitely bigger pieces if you were doing a bigger board or even smaller so I just really like their cheese section. Another soft cheese I'll be using is this goat's milk chevre with honey. It's really really good. It's kind of like a the texture of like a feta cheese or a goat cheese. Um, it's just really, really good. Another kind of softer cheese, but I really like the honey because it's kind of like a more of a tart cheese in a sense, but it has a really nice contrast with the honey that's in combined in this. So I really like this one. And the final one, I wanted to do something a little more basic. So we just have a New Zealand sharp cheddar cheese. And this one again, this whole block was 371, which is really, really great. And it's just a little bit fancier than the grocery store cheese that you can get, but obviously you could easily just use like a cracked block of cheese, cut it up and make it look fancy and that would work too. The next thing is certainly optional, but I personally am a big olive person. I love green olives, I love black olives, I love Kalamata olives. I just love all the olives, whether they're sliced, whether they're whole. I just love the saltiness of them. There's just something about them. You can of course skip that because olives are a controversial food and not everyone likes them. So you can skip that if you don't want it on your board, but I really wanted it. Um, and I really thought this Greek olive medley from Trader Joe's, it looked really cool. It's got a bunch of different colored olives in here. They look really good. So I'm just gonna take this and put it out in a nice little bowl. And honestly, that's a really good way to mask something if you want it to look fancier than it is. You could easily just buy canned or jarred olives, get one or two kinds, throw it in here and make it look like you bought a fancy medley, but really you just put it in a pretty bowl and made it look nice. So. Don't feel like you have to spend a lot of money on all this stuff. You can easily just slice it up and make it look pretty and make it look like it costs a lot of money, but it didn't. 
Now I got two meats here. So we have some prosciutto as well as some Italian dry salami. You can use pepperoni, you could use ham if you wanted to. Um, you can use all sorts of types of meat, you can leave it off. It's all kind of a personal preference. I just wanted to do two because I just didn't, this was a pretty big package of salami and this was kind of the, the one I wanted to get because it was pre-sliced. I didn't want to have to cut it myself. Um, so I just got these two, but you can have all sorts of different types that you want to use on your board. Another staple item that you kind of really can't have the board without is some crackers. So I just got this cracker trio from Pepperidge Farm. It's just kind of some like whole wheat crackers, some more like plain crackers, and then some like more goldeny, like thicker crackers in there in the shape of a butterfly. Whatever you want to use works, you can just get one kind, but most grocery stores have, whether it's Pepper Farm or any type of cracker brand, um, they come with these trios whenever you want to do something like this and you want to have a variety for the different types of cheeses and things that you have um, or just for different people's personal preference. And the last thing I'm going to include on my board is some strawberries and some grapes. So I'm just going to wash those up. I'll probably keep the grapes in the bunches so that they can kind of sit around the board. Um, and then the strawberries, I will leave a couple of them whole, maybe slice a couple of them up just to give it some pretty dimension. But that's basically all you need. You can obviously add whatever you want into it. You can add lots more things in there. I think another staple item that a lot of people do is the little like round kind of crostini, little like toasted breads with some spread, some sort of jam spread. That's just not my thing and I just didn't really care to include it. But you can of course include anything that you want. You can even include like something really sweet like some sort of dessert or chocolate. Really whatever you want to include. You can, so I'm gonna now show you how I kind of put everything together. So basically all I'm gonna do is kind of start off with the olives. Um, since that's gonna be a bowl, this is kind of being my like centerpiece that I work around. Um, so I'm just gonna put some of the olives in this little bowl here and set that in the center. And then because I have four cheeses, I'm probably going to stick a cheese in each of the kind of corners around. Uh, for the kind of harder cheeses, I'll probably go ahead and slice a little bit of of it up. I probably won't put the entire thing on here. Um, I can always put it somewhere where I can grab it out if we run out or want some more of it. Um, but I'll probably slice some up and then leave some unsliced so people can kind of slice what they want. And then the softer cheese, this one I'm just going to have like a knife next to it because or like a, just like a butter knife, nothing fancy, because um, it's really a soft cheese. You kind of just need, you could even use like a spoon for this. And then the brie, I'll of course slice that up a little bit as well, and then um, leave a little cheese knife beside it. I just have this one, it's kind of basic, but um, for some reason the holes make it easier for cheese. I don't really know why, I'm not, you could use literally whatever you have. Um, most of these you can probably just cut with a butter knife. So you don't have to make it fancy, but I have one, so I might as well use it. Once I do the cheeses, I'll probably then put some of the meats down all in different sections and then kind of fill in the gaps with some of the crackers around. And then the remaining little spots that I have, I'll throw in the different fruits and different spots. And then just kind of fill it in as I see it needs a spot. So we have a decent amount to work with, but I have a feeling as I put all this on here, it's gonna fill up pretty quickly. So I'll go ahead and film how I kind of arrange everything and then I'll show you how it looks at the end.
Alrighty, so here is the final product. We have all the different cheeses kind of in a square, then the meats, fruits, crackers, and olives in the middle. It turned out really good. I was gonna slice up a strawberry, but I didn't really have a spot for it, so kind of just stuck the couple in the corners there, but it looks really good, it looks really fancy, and it really wasn't hard. All I had to do was literally slice up some of the cheeses and wash up the fruit. So this is a really good option to kind of throw out a really fancy appetizer, but it really, really doesn't require any cooking. So that is awesome. So that concludes today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and it was helpful for you. And let me know if you make your own, share some pictures with me. I do have an Instagram. It's morgues underscore menu. I'll throw the handle on the screen here as well as in the description box down below. Make sure you follow that and send me some pictures if you make your own charcuterie board. I love seeing all the different stuff that people have done just in the past. So it'd be really cool to see if any of you do it too. If you're new to my channel and haven't yet subscribed, make sure you go and subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the videos that I post on Wednesdays and Sundays. Thanks again for watching Morgue's Menu and hope you have a great day. Bye guys. Mm -hmm.